Okay, it's been a while since I did a video, <clears throat> and this is one that's been requested over and over and over and over again. It's my Supreme Pumpkin Seed uh, color pattern, and I've been trying to come up with a good pumpkin seed pattern for a couple years now. And I think I finally got one I really liked, and I'm finally going to share that with you. So what I did is I started with a... Uh, this is a deep CB crankbait body. I already did the blue, I'm sorry, I already did the white base coat. The next step is to go with a baby blue and I'm going to run that right around the gill and the top part of the bait. <clears throat> so here we go. I'm not using a lot of air pressure maybe 15 or so, I don't know, yeah, 15 or so, I might even turn that down a little bit. So just right around the gill, lightly, and then half the body. So basically I'm creating an undercoat to help with some of the effects we're going to do later. And it doesn't have to be accurate at all. And you'll see why later. Okay, so that's all I got. I'll do a little bit more on this side, we'll darken it up a little bit. All right, that's it. I'll heat set it and we'll go on to the next color. Okay, the next step is to work on the belly. And I'm gonna do that with gold. Um, this is a Tester's Pearl Gold I got from DingerBaits.com. I've tried a lot of pearls from different companies. This one sh seems to shoot the best. <clears throat> so it's DingerBaits.com, and I get a lot of lure bodies from there, too. So let's uh, do the belly. I'm shooting a little higher pressure because it is a pearl, and I don't want the pearl flex to clog. You'll need a few coats, but just hit the belly right up to where the blue is. If it overlaps the blue, that is okay. Okay, I'll heat set that. And let's do another coat. So right now we're just laying some underlying colors. I like to layer my colors. That's how you get the depth and the realism in the, uh, in the color patterns. Okay, we're going to continue to layer on some colors onto the belly. I'm using this Comart, um, it's like a yellowish orange. I wish I can tell you the color, but it wore off. But uh, again, it doesn't be exactly what I'm using, but like a yellowish orange. And again, we're going to layer some colors on the belly. And this is just color number two. There'll be one more color later. And this color, you're going to put it on kind of thin. This way the gold still shows through and gives a really nice effect. So that's that yellow-orange, but with the gold showing through. And it'll give that little bit of a flash when it's swimming too. There you go. Okay, now this is kind of where the magic happens here. <clears throat> I need to put on some masking to, to make the that little pumpkin seed design. And I found some ribbon on eBay and believe me, I would tell you who it is if they had more and she does not. It's been about six, eight months since I got it and she says she could not get any of this. It's basically glitter ribbon. Some of the glitter is rubbed off. You can see some of the glitter there. And what we do is we're going to wrap the bait up. And you want to wrap it kind of tight, but try not to scratch the bait, especially when that glitter hasn't rubbed off yet. There's always a chance you're going to scratch the bait. So clip it on real good. And there's some really cool effects you can do with this ribbon. 
rather than just spray straight through it. And I'll show you that technique shortly. Kind of a secret thing I came up with, which is not going to be secret much longer, because I'm going to tell you how to do it. It's going to give the bait kind of a 3D effect. I'm going to put a clip right here and tighten up the front end. I hope I'm in focus and in frame here, but because I can't get my GoPro to sync up with my new phone. And that would have the viewfinder on it, which would be really helpful right about now. Oops. Let's do that. I just want to keep it really tight. Okay. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to have to spray some, uh, like an Indian red, what they call it, a red oxide now, and a moss green on here. If I did that right now over that blue, it's going to muddy up and you're not going to get the true color. So what you got to do is now put on another white base coat. And I'm going to do that on all the areas that's blue and not the gold. Okay. So just be kind of careful, but you don't have to be super ac accurate either. We're not building rocket ships here, so... It's going to take a couple coats of white, just go straight on to it. And this white we're putting on also is going to give a 3D effect later. Somebody's wondering, I'm using an Iwata HPCS airbrush. Has a, the nozzle is like, what, 0.35. And I have another Iwata HPCH, which has a smaller nozzle, which is a 0.30. Doesn't sound like much of a difference, but it's great for detail. Okay, so there's the white. Basically, we created another white base coat. And now we'll go on to our, uh, the greens and that uh, red oxide. Okay, now for the big secret. <clears throat> the next color is going to be red oxide and it's a Comart color. Some of the old color names is uh, Indian red, but they renamed it to red oxide. So if your store has some of the older bottles, it may say Indian red or uh, red oxide. Also, if you're using the inks, which I like because they're thin, and you don't have to reduce them. I like this uh, Dollar Roni color. It's called uh, Red Earth, and it's basically the same color. I love it. All right, so we're looking at this going, gosh, how do I get that 3D effect? You see how there's a little bit of white in there? What we have to do to get that white but still get that Indian red or red oxide color here is you need a spray at an angle. That's the secret part. So this is between you and I. It doesn't go any farther than here. Tilt your bait like this. This way when you're spraying some of the white on the other side of that ribbon texture won't get covered up with the red oxide. So you start from the front. And let me turn the pressure down a little bit. And I'll just kind of do the gill area first and then I'll go straight to the back at an angle. If you go straight down on it, your white's going to get covered up. Okay, and that's all you have to do with that. So now if you look at it, yeah, you can see the red oxide. We see a little white showing. That's what's going to give you your 3D effect. And now we have to do the same thing on the other side. It's a little bit of paint. Don't go crazy because you don't want it to pull up. 
little goes a long way. Do the gill and head area and then go straight back. One nice stroke. Take a peek at it. Uh, if I need a little more. There you go. See, again, you'll see some white spots showing. That's what you want. All right. Next will be our um, olive green. Okay, next color is going to be olive green. And again, I'm using these inks from uh, Dollar Rowney. Um, it's called olive green. I got these at Hobby Lobby, or you just order them online through uh, Dick Blake's Art Supply. But <clears throat> make sure you got some airflow. And now we're going to use the same technique with this green that I did with the brown. And it's okay if it overlaps and touches because it actually has a nice effect. It turns, I don't know, like a darker brown, a little more of a natural look. But so just go straight from the top all the way down. And go all the way to the top of the back. Again, at an angle. All right, I'm gonna do another coat and I'll dry this first. And now the other side. And I'll dry that. Here's the green. I got some green overlapping that brown. It's kind of a muddy, kind of a brown, but it gives a nice natural look. All right, so before I put the paint away, I'm gonna take the mask off. I'm gonna paint some of that green on the back. But this is kind of the big reveal. When I was first experimenting and doing this, when I took the mask off, I'm like, ew. Didn't look good, but I've come this far. Might as well just keep going and see. And it got better and better as I continued. So never give up. Always finish the bait. Unless you know for sure it's going to be really bad. Hey, what do you think of that? See that 3D effect? That's what we're striving for. There's the other side. So I'm going to hit the green on the back a little more. And, uh, and look it up here. You see how it's kind of like uh, a little fuzzy? It's be, uh, it's, it's, the pattern isn't as sharp as the other part of the body. That's because the, the ribbon wasn't right on the bait. It was off a little bit. But I like that because it gives a nice natural look. So uh, I'm going to dry this up and we will move on. Okay, now we are going to go right back to the belly for a minute and finish that off. Again, we had the gold, then we had that yellowish orange, and now we're gonna put on Comart's, uh, this is a Daryl orange, and they stopped that color too. They renamed it something else, and I haven't gotten it yet. But uh, I don't know why they do that, it's frustrating, because I fall in love with the color, and then they rename it or discontinue it. So, I got that Daryl orange, and I'm gonna go lightly over that gold and yellowish orange so more on the do more on the belly and leave a little bit lighter on the edges and it'll give that nice kind of a reflecting effect when it's in the sun so just like that still kind of see the gold a little bit underneath that orange all right we'll heat set that and we'll move on okay Next thing now is we're going to put some stripes on here, like you see here, but you can barely see the stripes. Some people want to go really dark on stripes. I like subtle stripes, and a little goes a long way. I'm going to use detailed sepia. Sepia is not a base color, but it's more for highlighting. So I'm going to use the old school comb, 
and a lightly spray through the comb and it will give some of those highlights here see the sepia there 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 and there and also on the back to darken that up and give it a little more natural look and after all these years i'm still not all that good at doing stripes with a comb sometimes they overdo it but that's what happens just go real light that's it. Kind of see a little bit there. Flip it around. Hope that's in the frame. There you go. And I'm going to hit the back with some of the sepia, and it should darken it up very lightly. Don't use a lot. Hit the back and let some of the overspray go down the sides. That's where you get the realism from, see? Are we darkening it up now? It's all coming together. See that? Everybody says, oh, how do you get your pattern so real looking? It must take hours. No, I don't want to be in here for hours, as fun as this is. So, so, so just as I was finishing up the last clip, the battery ran out on the camera. So I recharged overnight, started this morning. I thought I was re recording some steps here on doing the gill mark, and it turned out I did not have the SD card in. So I'm going to explain what I did. First of all, I'll do the gill marks. If you go on Facebook and look up Insane Custom Stencils by Russ Allen, you'll see these stencil wheels. This one's for fins and the gill mark, which I've been using. And he has other ones here for more gill marks. Here's a gill plate. They're really durable. Here's some stripes. And some more stripes, bigger sizes. He has a very different lure bodies about 15 to 20 bucks on Facebook and he ships pretty quick. <clears throat> I also have used the fin stencils, those are great too. So because this one's already done and I thought I had the SD card, I will show you one that's almost done because I had to do two for an order. <clears throat> I started with some white, took this stencil, laid it on the bait, sprayed some white on both sides as you can see there, and on the throat. Now, you gotta do the second layer of the black. That's what I'll show you on this bait here. I'm gonna do, right, go right over it, but shorten it up just a little bit to leave a little bit of white showing. Just like that. Leaves a bit of a white haze there. I like that. It looks very natural. I'll flip it around. Let me wipe that stencil clean. I have to flip the stencil around. I don't want the black on any part of the lure that shouldn't have black. So there's the white. I'll slide down a little bit so we can leave a little bit of white showing. Again, awesome stencils. Russ Allen on Facebook, insane custom stencils. I only endorse the products that I think work great and good service, and that's him. All right, before I put the black away, I always like to hit some black on the spine, eyes, and nose. It's carefully down in the back, not a lot. A little goes a long way. I like it around the eyes because it makes the eyes stand out more once I insert the eyes. There you go. Very natural looking. There's one last thing we got to do, and that is the red little accent mark. Why do I put that there? Because, well, I looked at some reference photos. Some fish have them. Also, a little detail never hurt, especially when you're trying to sell your baits. And I'll show you how we Okay, one of the last things is putting that red accent on the gill. What I did, if you can look over here, I put some paint on some painter's tape just to 
few drops. Get the camera straight again. And then I broke off a brush handle and I used the little tip there. So I'll dip the tip into the red paint. This way you have more control and just dot. That's it. It's that easy. Again, you know, everything's in the detail. It makes you look like you've put a lot of time and effort into the bait. I'll heat set this, I'll put some eyes on, and then, normally I don't show the clear coat process, but I'm doing a new clear coat process with KBS Diamond Clear, where you dip, and a lot of people have questions, so I am going to show that. Okay, the last and final step is clear coating. <clears throat> and what I started using um, is something called KBS Diamond Clear. All you do is dip the bait, and you can get a lot of baits done in a short amount of time. I did years ago start with Devcon, uh, two ton, the 30 minute working stuff, and then I went to the BSI, which I still like. And then uh, EnviroTech Light, which I like as well, but I need a, uh, a drying wheel for that. <clears throat> so the way you do the KBS is you need two wires. All right, so I cut a wire here for hanging. Make sure this is not touching the bill. And then you need a short wire here on the tail. And the reason is when you hang it and it drips, if you didn't have that wire, it's going to stop and pool right there on the end, which is not what you want. And I'm actually doing two baits, because behind the scenes earlier, I did two pumpkin seeds. Again, the hanging wire and the drip wire. And this is going to go pretty quick. And I took the KBS and put it in a jar and you store it with some cellophane over the top and you don't get that uh, that plastic film or whatever uh, on the on the uh, top of the clear coat it does stink a little bit but I tell you what it dissipates really fast and I have a fan in my booth and uh, I guess it dissipates fast so I don't mind it all right, so you're going to dip and make sure you get the bill too. It will clear the, you have some baits where the bills are kind of cloudy like that. It'll clear the bill right up. So here we go. Just dip. Tilt a little bit. There we go. Just let it drip off a little bit. And you're going to love the results. Some people do one coat. Um, I start doing two. Just be on the safe side for the toothy critters too. But uh, I wouldn't do a second coat until tomorrow, about 24 hours. And then I have a wire hanging over my booth with some tin foil so it can drip. And again, we'll do one more. Here's this 2.5 square bill. Just dip all the way and drop in. That forward hook hanger, believe it or not, will not clog up most of the time. Let it drip. It should open up. And these wires come out pretty easily. You just got to move them around, and they should pop out. It doesn't get so hard in 24 hours that you can't get the wires out. But it is a really durable clear coat. Quick. So we did two baits in less than a minute, when that would probably take me, you know, five, ten minutes with DevCon. All right. Let's package this back up. Seal it up. Good storage is important. And there you have it. Let me show you here what we got. Those are your supreme pumpkin seeds. Thanks for joining. And if you haven't already, subscribe because I'm going to start doing more videos. It's been a while, but I'm going to start doing more. Thank you.